everyone, it's Sean from What Up, and welcome back to another video. Now, we've had a ton of Wheel of Time news over the last week or so, so much so that this is going to take a few videos to sort it out. But we're going to start with today talking about IGN's new videos where they're explaining what the Dark One and the Dragon are. The new Explain series that the Wheel of Time is running over on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're going to talk about Lauren Balfe and the two new songs that he released and the fact that the full album of the soundtrack of the first season is coming out November 12th. Uh, and we have some fans that weighed in on that that actually talked to Lauren, so we have some interesting tidbits there. Then we're going to talk about advertising. We're seeing the Wheel of Time absolutely everywhere. And finally, we're going to finish off with the world premiere in London as well as all of the premiere all over the US and a few different places in the world and how certain content creators are involved in that. So we're going to talk about all that in today's video and you're not going to miss a single bit of it. If you're new to the channel and you don't know what to do here, click that subscribe button and the notification bell. I put out, well, I, I would usually say one to two videos per week, but now we're talking multiple videos per day about the Wheel of Time. And as we get closer to the November 19th release, the videos are going to increase in frequency. And when the show comes out, I'm going to break every little aspect of that show down for you. You're not going to miss any of that, so make sure you're subscribed. All right, all of that being said, there is no spoiler warning for this video because we're not going to talk about any elements of the book series of the show. This is just good, fun news that you can find pretty much everywhere, so everyone can enjoy this video. All right, that being said, let's get on to the video itself. All right, so if we had any doubts that they're going to branch out and try to reach non-book readers, they're pretty much quashed at this point because of IGN. Now, IGN did a bunch of stuff for The Wheel of Time so far. Essentially, what happened was is they went on set and they interviewed a lot of the cast and the showrunner back when they were filming the very first episode. Now, we've seen that in a trailer breakdown from Rafe Judkins that was hosted on IGN's channel. we also seen that in the First Look video where they interviewed a lot of the cast about their characters. And it was really a treat to see, and I've left a link to those two videos down below in the description box. But there's this third one here that just came out a couple of days ago, and I've left this one down there too. And this is Rafe Judkins talking to IGN about who the Dark One is, who the Dragon is, what the Breaking is, and a lot of the cast and crew were talking about it as well. Really neat to see, and again, for a book reader, it doesn't really give us any new information whatsoever. However, it does a really good job of explaining certain things to people who maybe don't know much about the books and are interested in the show. That goes part and parcel with this. The Wheel of Time is running an Explained series. Now, this Explained series talks about different things. So far, they've done a couple of videos, but the most recent one is this. What is a warder? They go on to explain in very broad strokes what a warder does, what he is, and why he is what he is. Pretty neat to see, and again, not super targeted at book fans. People have read the series a bunch of times because there's no new information in there for us. However, this is a really good idea before the show drops to start explaining stuff that maybe non-book readers who watch the show later on will have questions about. Now, I've done some explained videos on my channel here, and a lot of the other content creators have done pretty much the same thing, but these ones are polished, they're short, they're to the point, and they give just enough information to give people an idea of what's going on. I think they're brilliant, personally. You can find them over on the Wheel of Time Twitter or their Instagram account. I've left a link to them down below in the description box if you want to follow them there. Now we're going to talk about this. Now Lauren Balfe is the composer for the Wheel of Time, so he is doing a lot of the music for the first season. Now, he recently debuted two new singles, and I'm going to completely butcher the pronunciation of them because I am. I just, that's what I do here. First one is Mashiara, that's uh, Heart in the Old Tongue, and Kaisen Shar, which is Old Blood. Uh, these two new singles, he talked about them almost exclusively on Twitter, Facebook, a little bit on Instagram here and there, interacting with the fans, talking with them about them, um, kind of promoting them. So now we've seen three separate three separate singles from the album. Now, the album itself is going to drop November 12th, so we'll hear all of the music for the first season. Um, and this music is really different. I will give it that. It's Usually, you know, fantasy music is usually big orchestras, a very sweeping, very broad. This is a little bit different. It draws from a lot of different places around the world, uses the old tongue for the music. Uh, I really like it. It's different. It's haunting. Um, and I wasn't the only one that noticed that's different. So one of the fans of the channel, somebody who does watch regularly, actually reached out to Lauren and asked the question, well, it doesn't really seem like it's pop music or pop fusion. It doesn't sound like it would be popular on the radio. Um and that fantasy music is normally orchestra music. He just had a couple of questions. And then Lauren came back, and I have to read you this because I have a terrible memory, but Lauren's response was absolutely brilliant. All right, so Lauren had this to say. He said, thankfully, they aren't meant for radio play. They're for the actual show. The last thing we wanted to do was also get on the generic cliche route of epic orchestral music. That's exactly what one would be expected from this genre. What is special and isn't like the rest of the genre, I think. Now, 
I think it's really neat that Lauren interacted with this fan, although not entirely surprising because if you take a look at it, he's released lyrics for all the songs. He, he's released the songs himself. He's talked about them. And he's interacted with the community. He's talked to a number of people about his music. And not just that, our own Alitza, who does all of the graphics for the channel, as well as the intro and outro music, did a beautiful rendition of El Nieto. And again, I pronounced that probably wrong. I'm, I'm really bad at pronouncing things. But it is an absolutely amazing cover of this song. And when she talked about it and tweeted it out there and, and, and basically let people know, Lauren responded to her and told her he thought it was beautiful. And she was absolutely over the moon for it. So I want you folks to take uh, a minute at the end of this video and go to that video. So I've left a link down below in the description box. It is an absolutely beautiful rendition of that song and it does not have near the amount of views it should. So I want you to go take a look at that, listen to that. And uh, if you do like Wheel of Time music or Wheel of Time inspired music, sub to her channel as well because she de deals exclusively in music and she is really very good at what she does. All right, so we've seen a lot of advertising everywhere. However, myself personally, I've only seen advertising either on YouTube or on TV. That's pretty much it. And that's the teasers and the trailers. Um, and I got very excited when I did see them. However, I haven't even seen them in the theater in some of the movies that people are saying they saw them in front of. So Dune, for example, yeah, it wasn't in front of the, um, the Dune at my theater. However, um, I have a little challenge for you folks. I want you to write in the comments down below where you're from. Just give me a general idea. I don't want your address, but give me a general idea and what Wheel of Time advertising you've seen. So I know that certain areas of the states is completely saturated with Wheel of Time advertising because we see a lot of it and I'm really excited about that. Um, but let me know if you've seen anything at all out in the wild. And I don't mean on television or on YouTube. I wanna know if you've seen billboards, if you've seen displays set up in your local bookstores, if you've seen any viral marketing. I mean, there was that particular viral marketing they had a few weeks ago where they showcased all the costumes in Europe and that was really very neat. Although, I wanna know of any other ones that maybe we missed or we haven't seen uh, around the world. So let us know about that. So in addition to all of that beautiful advertising that we're seeing in certain areas of the world, we also got these. These are brand new character posters. Now. I'm going to be the first one to admit it. Uh, a lot of people have said, I like everything, but I did not like the first poster they put out. I thought it was absolute garbage. I really did, no offense to the artist or anything. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was well thought out or well put together. And a lot of the fans kind of thought the same way. However, they learned from that. The other character posters they put out were layered PDFs and it gave the fandom something to do. They stripped away the layers. They found the weaves. They found a very cool little Easter egg inside. Super neat. Now, these were released by the Twitter of Chaos, so that's the Wheel of Time Twitter account and their Instagram account, basically showcasing the weaves, because they said, everybody really likes weaves, so why don't we show you some more? Now, we've only ever seen two colors of weaves in the teasers and the trailers. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've gone through them a few times, and there's some suggestions of color, although mostly what we're seeing is either black or white when the one power is being used, either the taint, corruption, sorry, <laughs> they want to avoid those memes if they can, uh, or the one power itself. However, these posters feature a multitude of colors. In fact, some of the colors I wouldn't really expect, like purple, different hues of blues and green. Uh, I really like it. I think they're very cool. And the posters themselves are beautiful. They are learning, they are adapting, and as they release more and more of this promotional material, it gets better and better each time. Now, these particular character posters, we have uh, Roseman Pike as Moraine, Daniel Henney as Lan, this one's interesting. Alvaro Morte is Loghain. Now, Loghain is not a main character in any way, shape, or form in the books. Uh, he becomes important later on, but for the first few books, we don't see much of him at all. In fact, he's only in a few pages in The Eye of the World. However, they're billing him as a main character, and that kind of makes sense. So they expanded Loghain's storyline, which happened mostly off-page in the books and was something that a lot of the fans for a very long time have been asking for, because let's face it, he's a really interesting character, and what he did to get where he went there's a lot of questions about that. A lot of fan fiction wrote about, it, wrote about it too. And when they cast this character, they cast Alvaro Morte. Now, Alvaro Morte has a massive social media following and is a giant actor in his own right. So, of course, if they have an expanded role for this character, they're going to cash in on using his face to promote the show because, let's face it, he's very recognizable and very billable. So, again, very smart move in their behalf. Then we have... Uh, Nynaeve, this is Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve. We have Yosha Sturowski as Rand Althor. We have Madeline Madden as Egwene. And then we have Marcus Rutherford as Perrin. And finally, Bernie Harris as Matt. Now, we all know that Matt is not returning for season two, so Bernie is only going to do the first season of the show. He's being replaced for the second season. However, in everything I've seen so far, Bernie was brilliant. He really was. Uh, and I do have a teaser video coming out I think later today or tomorrow, 
uh, that showcases Matt, him talking a little bit, and his dialogue is spot on. Like, he's Matt through and through. So I'm really sad to see him go. However, I'm sure uh, they have their reasons. Now, again, as much as I love these posters, and I love seeing the weaves on them and all the different colors, um, what I want to talk about next is a little bit more exciting. This is the World and extra premieres, I guess you want to call them. So they have a world premiere in London. It's happening on November 15th. Uh, some of the main cast are invited. A lot of the production is invited. Um, and they've invited some major content creators to be there to cover it. So they're going to be on the red carpet interviewing the cast, interviewing the production team, basically being the host. It's going to be really neat for them. Now, the people I have heard of going, and these are by no means all of them, is Matt from the Dusty Wheel. Well-deserved Matt. He is the best of us as far as I'm concerned, and I'm really happy that he's able to attend this event. Uh, we have Daniel Green. Uh, we have Nate Bliss. We have Critter XD from TikTok and a few others. Now... In addition to that, they've also invited some local fans. So these are people from Twitter of Time who are big Wheel of Time fans that are very interactive on the community online. However, maybe they're not content creators, but they are in the UK. They are from London, so they're nearby, so they could attend. So production got together uh, with the marketing team, and they decided to invite those folks as well. Now, in addition to this, they're doing a ton of little premieres. When I say little, I don't mean... By, by any means that they're small, I mean that they're not the world premiere. Now, these are happening all over the states. You can see the cities here and where you can get your tickets. If you're in any of those cities, I urge you to go and I want you to take pictures and send them to me. Now, the email is in the about section of my channel. I want to see all kinds of pictures from these premieres. Now, they also chose content creators from in and around these cities to host these events. So you're going to see different content creators in each one of these hosting, talking. Um, gonna they'll, they'll be there covering them on their media. So you're going to see a lot of stuff about this. Now... Unfortunately, I was not chosen to go to any of these. However, I am kind of tucked away up in Canada, and uh, we don't have a single premiere <laughs> in Canada. There's no love for us Canucks. Uh, and it was just the U.S. However, Latin America is going to get some as well. Uh, and recently I heard that they're going to do one in France too. So they are starting to branch out internationally and do it in different countries. Although, so far, nothing for Canada. And oddly enough, nothing in Prague. Uh, there's been quite a few people on Twitter time from Prague basically mentioning that why aren't they doing a premiere there? Um, they thought it was a little strange because they filmed it there and Jordan Studios is there. But there's that. Now, for this uh, UK um, screening event, now this is something a little bit different. It's a screening event um, at the Tower of London. Um, there is a contest going. So on Instagram right now, if you comment or talk about... You know, there's certain criteria you got to share it. you got to put in your plus one. I'll link the post down below. It's from the Wheel of Time Instagram account. Essentially, you can enter in a contest to get tickets to the screening event if you're in and around uh, the London area. So you can go right to the Tower of London and watch, I think it's the first two episodes of the Wheel of Time. Very neat. And again, this is a contest sponsored by uh, Amazon and Sony. And at the time of this recording, you basically, there's 10 tickets to be available, I think. I think maybe there was only 65 or 70 entries that met all of the criteria um, for entry. Now, again, that could be crazy exploded by now, but at the time of this recording, there was not many people entered, so the chances were really good of getting a ticket. So I've left a link to that post down below in the description box. Take a look at that. Uh, go enter it over there. Now, all of that being said, I am very excited for the show. I'm going to do a couple of more videos that are going to come out over the next you know day or so. First one is going to be a teaser video. We have that Matt teaser that showcased the blood snow, and the Nynaeve teaser where she you know killed a Trolloc all on her own, um, which was absolutely badass and cool to watch. I'm going to break down those two teasers in one video, and then I'm going to do a leaks video. Now we've had a lot of leaks lately, and I've not mentioned some of them on purpose. Uh, but I'm going to cover them in this next video. I won't show anything, but we'll talk about them a bit because, let's face it, there's nothing that we can't talk about at the very least, right? All right. Thank you so much for sticking with me here to the very end. Here's to many more.